found her on a field and uh, they were abusing her. So I actually witnessed it. I witnessed him uh, forcing her to give him oral sex. And you say they as in plural as in a lot of people? Or? But the most that I've been told about was a young woman that was taken to a flat and she stopped counting at 36. What? 36 30. adults, yeah, in one, one night. Um, they actually then got a, a, a warrant, went in and found something like, I think it was 42 samples of sperm from the ceiling, the walls, the, yeah. do you know what I mean? F different DNA samples. I think that the government absolutely has to stop abandoning Robert. Of what it calls the appalling abuse of at least 1,400 children over a period of 16 years. Not shocked by the number as other people was because, you know, those 1,400 we'd work with and, you know, and actually that was a low estimate. Um... It details children being raped, trafficked, beaten and sometimes doused in petrol. And you imagine a 10, 11 year old being told if you don't do what we ask you to do, we're going to rape your mum. Why would they not believe that when it's happening to them every now? My daughter was removed. My niece actually got gang raped because she wouldn't tell them where her, her cousin were. So the threats are real. Yeah. But also, the key thing for me is this is a national issue. This is going on all across the country. Labour MP Sarah Champion estimates that there are over one million victims of grooming gangs in the UK. The inquiry says almost all the perpetrators were of Pakistani heritage. And I gave them a list of what my daughter had written, and she'd written the girls' names, the perpetrators' names, what all done what to all. And I handed that to the police. I forgot what I was going to say They whittled it down yeah. to eight perpetrators and five young women. When I asked what was going to happen to the other girls that were on this paper, they said, we've got to, we've got to, cut, off, we've got to uh, cut it off somewhere. Why? And I just looked at him and I went, but what about them other girls? Why would they cut it off? And I said, what about the other men that uh, have committed crimes? And he went, uh, there's not what we can do because we'll just be seen as racist. Even my abuser used to say to me, um, oh, it's all right, I'll just shoot the race card. According to the now infamous J report of child sexual exploitation in Rotherham, the difficulties that prevent this issue of CSC being dealt with effectively is the ethnicity of the main perpetrators. The police dared not act against Asian youths for fear of allegations of racism. We could put um, some very, very good intelligence in, but were constantly told it wasn't evidence, it wasn't good enough. And then on the flip side of that, what we were being told by professionals that were working with the children is the children were making a choice. Um, and they were facilitating, in some cases, their own abuse. It's children don't facilitate their own abuse and don't choose to be abused, but it seems to be the only area that we've actually allowed that to happen, is, is around child sexual exploitation. So, so, so basically the police and the authorities were basically saying that the kids were facilitating it? It was, yeah, yeah, they'd made the decision, it was an informed choice. So a nine-year-old kid, yeah. according to the police and the politicians, made a choice? Yeah, an informed choice, yeah. According to the authorities, these girls made an informed choice to be scratched, choked, beaten, branded, gang raped, sexually assaulted with knives and a baseball bat, raped with a broken bottle. A girl had her tongue nailed to the table when she threatened to tell. I think I got really close to having a nervous breakdown. I couldn't process that there was this whole dark world going on that girls in this town could go through such incredible horrors that they go to the police, they go to the council who are just turning a blind eye on them. That, that shouldn't happen in my town and that shouldn't happen in my country. Not only did the city council turn a blind eye, the Sarah J report mentions that some influential council members of Pakistani descent in Rotherham had acted as barriers in dealing with this issue. Hello, I'm Councillor Jahangir Akhtar. What do you want protected? Protected. 
As well, my abuse, it's him who was related to Jangir Actor, who was, well, the council is not now, is it? Yankee Actor is related to the Hussein family, who were one of the most active grooming gangs in Rotherham. Jessica's abuser, Arshar Hussein, is Janky Actor's cousin. Um, and when I went missing, the police and Janky Actor uh, met with me and my abuser at a petrol station and passed me over. And again, he didn't get arrested. But he actually passed me over. All that's since been investigated by authorities and you were cleared of all the wrongdoings. Apparently, because that's not a criminal offence, and they sometimes do that on odd occasions. <laughs> and you think that the the bless you, the relationship between the the abuser and this politician probably helped him from not being arrested. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And you actor has since been accused by the victims of participating in the sexual abuse. Like what I was thinking, I know it's probably mm -hmm. quite bad to say this. If it would have been 1,400 Muslim girls mm. raped by white men, Rotherham would be on terrorist alert. What? Probably we would have been bombed. Well, yeah. And, and nobody wants to speak about it in case, oh God, you know, you're racist, you can't say that. Mm. And have you guys ever been accused of being racist? I, yeah. When I witnessed the abuse, I took a statement two days after, and I'm not racist because I've got yeah. coloured ink family and mm. don't bother me. And I just said, get off my daughter, you black bastard. Yeah. And she, she, put, she said that they wouldn't use me as a credible witness because I'd be classed as racist. Yeah. That's how I remember actually one of my first interviews I did. And they said to me, uh, why do you think, you know, it were yeah. covered up? And I said, I'm, I, I won't be able to say it on camera. She said, if it's, you know, all bad, we won't mm. air it anyway. And all I said were, I think it would cut it were Asia. Yeah. But I was even scared to say it because yeah. in in Rotherham, you, you can't say no. anything bad about a Pakistani. The, I think the white race is way below and everybody else gets, you know, favoritised mm. over a white person, whether it to be with a criminal offence, with housing, with benefits. And in this way, you could say that many people in the West are becoming a sort of mm, a second, second, what's called second class citizen in their own neighborhoods. Islamic uh, scriptures even have a, a term for that. It's called a dimi, a dimi state, a status of a dimi. Yeah. David Cameron keeps saying that we're Great Britain and we're not no. Great Britain, we're no. just Britain. Because you, you can't even fucking protect your own kids. Exactly. And as well, I think that what the saddest thing is for me is that they don't actually want to protect them because yeah. they know exactly what's going on. Sweden, you know, Sweden and Germany will find themselves in the future uh, exactly the same way that Britain is in now, which is, which is organised Muslim gang rape, which is then covered up by the British establishment. In Sweden, in those areas, I mean, we were more free. We were more free, but I saw that uh, immediately that we Somalian, we were changing. We're not allowed to dress. Uh, the Imam says that we're not allowed to dress Somali tradition dress anymore. We should cover ourselves. Uh, people were practically forced into Sharia law. That's what exactly what happened to me. Uh, we've been forced to wear the hijab and the niqab. We've been covered head to toe. The hijab and the niqab, it's uh, protection. It's for your protections and uh, for, for, for women not to be uh, sexually molested and all that. For them, I think the hijab is a symbolic uh, marker which um, separates the submissive, proper Muslim women from what they see as the Norwegian horse. But when I say horse, I'm really just referring to their own words. This is what they told the journalists. This explains why 100% of assault rapes in Oslo are committed by migrants and 90% of the victims are ethnic Norwegian girls. Including 14-year-old Ava Helgeten, who was gang raped by three African migrants. One of the rapists was sentenced to a mere 344 hours of community service. Ava committed suicide three weeks after she was gang raped.
And so here we have it, the East London Mosque. You can see people outside, there have been people outside praying outside the mosque rather than inside. Uh, they're all heading inside the mosque now, some of them are coming out. So, welcome to East London. Overnight, the images are apocalyptic. London on fire, a wave of violence. We don't want freedom! We want Islam and the Sharia! No! Right, this area here, this uh, is called the Whitechapel Road, and uh, a couple of generations ago it used to be predominantly white working class. Um, a lot of Jewish people were living in this area too, uh, but of course in the last couple of decades, the last few decades, Many people have moved in from uh, Bengal uh, and other areas, a lot of Muslims, and uh, it's pretty much uh, a Muslim area now. The changing demographics of England made headlines in 2016 when the Muslim population surpassed 3 million. Parts of London are almost 50% Islamic. The Muslim population has tripled since 1991, and Muhammad is now the number one baby name in London. The, the, big, the big change in Britain um, took place in, in the late 1990s with the advent of, of, of Mr. Blair's Labour government in, in 1997. Um, they, they felt that a, more op a somewhat more open doors policy was appropriate uh, to regard migration much more as an asset, uh, both economic and, and cultural. Um, and a number of changes were made, both, both in administrative rules and also in legislation, which greatly facilitated uh, um, immigration. Uh, right behind me here, we have the East London Mosque, uh, which serves the largest Muslim community in the UK. It holds 7,000 people. Um, now, this, uh, this mosque has a very bad reputation. Uh, Andrew Gilligan of The Telegraph accuses it of being run by the Islamic Forum of Europe, which is an extremist organisation. They've had a number of uh, notorious uh, speakers there, uh, hate preachers of various kinds. So it doesn't have a good reputation. There's a risk. There's a risk uh, that, that it, it will have a, a negative effect. Um, um, it, it's, it's certainly the case that in in some minority groups, particularly from, from poor rural areas, where where in, in poor rural agricultural areas, it's normal for there to be a marked difference in equality between the sexes, and for, for society is much more patriarchal. Um, but insofar as those those societies don't change and don't integrate, uh, that then the, the, uh, as they grow in numbers, then the, the problem will, will, be, will, at least for a while, become worse. Oh, my God! As, as we went out into the concourse, like, to get out of the arena, there was, there was just bodies scattered about everywhere. 22 people were killed, including children. Police said 12 there children under the age of 16 like, were among them. After these incidents, you know, terrible, nasty, right-wing people like me say, where are all the Muslims saying not in our name? You know, you know we know that if you publish a picture of a, of a cartoon, you can immediately have 100,000 raving Muslims on the streets. But if, you, if they murdering cold blood children at a, 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 at a pop concert, you tend not to have any of them uh, coming out on the streets after and saying not in our name. That is the so CNN obviously uh, decided that what they needed to do was to get some people saying not in our name and, and, and film them. What I want to show you now, viewers, um, is a wonderful scene. Um, these are uh, Muslim mums turn to London. And I think uh, a poignant scene and a scene we should sit on just for you viewers uh, to understand exactly how people feel here on the streets of London, so close to what were such brutal attacks last night. It was after that one that CNN turned up and were organizing a group of about five or six uh, Muslim females. They were being maneuvered into a position where they could be grouped together with a very tightly uh, focused uh, TV CNN crew there to try and make them look as though they were far more. And they didn't realize that other people were filming CNN, filming the, uh, these Muslim women, and obviously organizing them. It was not an impromptu thing. It was, a, it was organized by CNN. What was supposed to be a spontaneous protest looked more like a Hollywood movie set with lights, producers, and actors receiving instructions from directors. To use this kind of uh, 
deliberate uh, confusion and cover up, um, you know, the sort of watering down of the truth is something that is extremely unhealthy in a democracy. My name is Sadiq Khan and I'm the Mayor of London. Sadiq Khan made history when he became the first Muslim Mayor of London in 2016. As the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan has pledged to be the British Muslim who takes the fight to the extremists. Yet he has also declared that he does not have the time to keep track of jihadists returning to London. Because the Met Police budget, roughly speaking, 15% to 20% is funded by me, the Mayor. The rest comes from central government. If the Met Police budget is being shrunk and reduced, they've got to prioritise and use their resources in a sensible, savvy what way. What could be a bigger priority than people coming back from a Syrian battlefield with intent to harm British citizens? Combating Islamophobia is a bigger priority. The mayor may not have the time or resources to keep track of returned jihadis, but the mayor has found £1.7 million to fight Islamophobia on the internet. Just one month after the Westminster attack, Sadiq Khan launched the London online hate crime hub. I can't follow 400 people. What I can do is make sure nobody really is able to say anything about uh, Islam ever again. So it's extraordinary. One of the most extraordinary things which I, which I came across the other day was um, a report by the London Metropolitan Police, 138 pages about Islamophobia. They list eight things that the police have decided um, are, are, are uh, redolent of Islamophobia. And one of them is apparently believing Islam to be a political ideology. So if you believe Islam is a political ideology, you're an Islamophobe in, in the eyes of the Metropolitan Police in, in Great Britain. And they classify that as a hate crime for which you can go to jail for two years. What can also land you in jail is viewing Islam as violent, aggressive, threatening, and supportive of terrorism. And I often, I often wonder, you know, when you think about the the uh, the Mushaween in Saudi Arabia, the religious police, these eight things that that, that the London Metropolitan Police have listed could could have come out of the Mushaween handbook in Saudi Arabia. It is total Sharia compliant enforcement policing. Uh, in in Western Europe now.